Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ken Bellringer, and um, I joined the army in 1991 and trained as an ammunition technician. And that job involved dealing with all aspects of military ammunition, and also included uh, bomb disposal. In 2009, uh, I was sent to Afghanistan and dealt with many bombs over four months. On one particular task, a, a member of my team stood on a device and as I was trying to extract him off the device, it exploded. It unfortunately, it killed him and severely injured me. The injuries were quite severe. Uh, at the time, they, I was told that they were the most severe injuries that anyone had survived. Um, most notable is uh, the, the loss of both legs uh, above my knees. Um, but uh, I've also lost both thumbs and, and received extensive damage to uh, my hands. So dexterity is a, is a, is a big issue. Um, I received uh, many other injuries, some of them which I've, I've recovered from, but there is extensive scar in there. And uh, I also received genital injuries as well, which is um, something I'm, I'm quite keen um, to to make it more of a, of a, of a talking point and something that we, we, we're not naturally refraining, refraining from because I believe it will be an issue for some in the future. I was conscious throughout the explosion um, and uh, you don't really think, you just, um, you're just on autopilot. Um, I, I had my eyes tightly shut, um, I, I, I think my, my mind didn't want me to see my injuries in their rawest form and um, I stayed conscious, uh, which I didn't really think about. I just responded to everyone was going on there. Uh, and then I was in a coma for five weeks. And when I first came round, I was just glad to be alive. Um, and I had fantastic support off the, the nurses and the, and, and the doctors. But you have some very quiet times in, in hospital and you, you go from being very fit, at the top of your profession, um, doing a, a job that you feel really good about, to being totally broken and, and, and busted up. And I just felt useless that I, I could be no good to anyone. And, and, and actually I went through, through, through a period where I, I just didn't want to go on. It, I just thought there was no point going on. My rehabilitation helped me realize that it was well worth going on. It wasn't easy at all. Um, I remember the very first physio session I had, all I had to do was lie on my side. And, and I thought that would be really easy. You do that all the time. I'm a fit soldier, that won't be a problem. Uh, the first time, first session was 20 minutes long. All I had to do was throw my arm over and I couldn't lie on my side. And, and that actually made me feel worse. And not only that, I was absolutely bathed in sweat, I had to be washed again, I had to have my bed sheets changed. And then the physio came back the next day and we repeated it all. It just felt me, I just felt absolutely terrible. And then on the third day when she came back, I really didn't want to do anything, but she was so inspirational to me. Um, and she just encouraged me and everything that, uh, that I tried and tried and I didn't think I'd do it. And, and then I managed to roll on my side. And that was kind of like the turning point in my head. And it was like, oh, okay, that might just be a little thing, but where do we go from here? And it was quite slow in some respects. Um, but then when it, things started to happen, it, it happened quite quickly. Uh, it was 18 months before I could sit up because all my hips had been shattered and the, the muscle wages, so that took a lot of physio. And then I was having lots of surgery over the years. And uh, my rehabilitation was a long time. I. I went to Headley Court in April um, 2010, and I only left there March 2018. Uh, the last few years uh, was trying to walk on prosthetics. Um, now, unfortunately for me, while I could hobble around the prosthetics room, which was a nice, flat clinical environment, I knew, eventually got to the realization that I was never going to live with these in, in real life. I couldn't put them on because of the damage to my hands. And also, because my left stump was so short, 
uh, they were so exhausting to use that I could only go 20 or 30 meters before having to have a significant rest. So I came to that realization that I needed to get on with life and that was gonna be life in a wheelchair. Um, and fortunately for me, being part of Blesma, I had lots of other people who I could look to for advice and inspiration and a realization that, that despite being in the wheelchair, life still goes on. I was lying in my hospital bed and not much was going on. We usually had lots of visitors and um, then uh, a chap called Keith Meakin stuck his head around the, the, the corner and uh, I'd never met Keith before and, and he said, I'm from, I'm from Blesma and uh, we haven't forgot about you, um, but we will come along when the time's right for you. And that instantly made me feel really good. That made me feel as if I was supported straight away. That it wasn't just a case of, here, have this, crack on with it. It was thinking about what I needed and and when I needed it. And it really went on from there. Now, I'd heard about Blesma before um, through Colin Whitworth, who was also the same same trade, had lost his lost his hand in a in in an instant and, and seen some of the fantastic sing, things that that Colin had had done and I never thought for one moment that I'd be a member of Blesma uh, but I, I really am um, glad that, that, that Blesma are there and are able to to support me. Blesma has been fantastic in in their support. Uh, there are lots of things that I can't do and I'll be honest with you I'm not really that interested in, in doing. I was never massively into sport. I used to take part in adventure training and do things like that. And many charities seem to focus on these areas uh, and expect that it covers all, all topics, but that's not just my thing. Blesma does provide that, but it also seems to provide a greater variety of opportunities, which means that, that I've been able to get involved in things like the Blesma Community Programme, and making generation art, which it is, which it is now, uh, and involves the things that that I enjoy doing, and that I can get a great sense of of pride. And what's nice is it's not just giving me things; it's giving me the tools to do things, and able to allow me to get a little bit of pride back, a little bit of self esteem that that you can't buy and provide to someone like you might provide a wheelchair or a nice holiday that is something that has to be earned by the person and Blesma are providing that uh, that opportunity and as I get older uh, and as there are issues there I know that for the rest of my life I will be supported by Blesma and, and that fills me with a lot of confidence. <laughs>